Okay, thank you everyone. Good morning, and I'm Bruno Schmidt. I'm here to present today the PFL Logic Synthesis Libraries, which is, it is the result of the combined work of many people in our LSI research group at the PFL. So we have this collection of libraries for open source infrastructure to do logic synthesis. We have state-of-the-art algorithms. We target both conventional logic synthesis, classical logic synthesis, and also quantum compilation more recently. And uh, our libraries, they have MIT license, as far as I remember. So a brief of the outline of this talk. I will talk a little bit about logic synthesis. I'm sorry about that. OK. This, uh... It's OK. It's OK. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully the others. It was fine before. Well, let's try to go like this. So I'll talk a little bit about logic synthesis, then the motivations and goals of the libraries, then a bit about their implementation, and then give an example of how to use them to do something interesting. So logic synthesis, the process by which we take some abstract specification of a circuit behavior, and then we map to some technology-dependent logic primitives. So we have a specification, for example, in RTL, Verilog, VHDL, and then we want to map it into a FPGA. And we know that at some point we need to map it to some LUT network, this LUT net lookup table networks that lies inside the FPGAs. To do so, we use a bunch of different ways of representing logic. So basically we take our specification, we will use one of these ways of representing. You have products of, of sums, sum of products, logic networks, the size, decision diagrams, and truth tables. And basically, in logic synthesis, what you do is start with one representation. We do some optimization. We, we go to another representation, do some more optimization. And we keep transforming until we are happy. And we do some technology mapping. So. What is the motivation and goals of, our, uh, of these libraries? So we're doing research in logic synthesis, and uh, we are a bunch of different researchers. We all did specific things. And what happened a lot is that we are all re-implementing, reinventing the wheel every time we wanted something. So basically, to reuse common functionality amongst us and amongst the community, that's what we are hoping for. So we really wanted these libraries to be easy to integrate easy to adapt for our needs, and easy to contribute. They are quite modular, so each library will target one specific task in logic synthesis. And, uh, and then we can compose them to create bigger frameworks. For example, Circuit, if you guys know about this, uh, it is today just the composition of all these libraries to, to do logic synthesis. We are also motivated by some lessons learned from the development from uh, Berkeley's ABC. The Alan Michenko, its creator and maintainer, had given us a talk and then where he shared with us all his experience and things that he would have done different if you were to implement ABC now. So we try to keep that in mind as well. So these are basically the, the nine libraries that you have these days. Uh, and as I told, told you, each one will, uh, will target a specific on, on, on when doing logic synthesis. A bit about the implementation before we go on the, into, the, into the example. So they are, implement, they are modern implementations. They use C++ 14 or 17. They are header only. They have almost no dependency. And when they have some dependency, it is usually header only and shipped together with the library. Just, so it's just like plug the folder and start playing with it. They are well documented and well tested. To some extent, we're still working on tests. It's, it's a hard thing. So for this presentation, because of the time limit, I will only focus on these four libraries and show you how you can compose these four libraries to go from a specification to LUT mapping that can then be given to a placing route and then put on an FPGA. So let's move on into the example. We start with the specification, and then we wanted to end in this LUT network. And for the sake of making this presentation interesting, the LUTs will have a limit size of three. Otherwise, it would be like too easy. We'll just use one LUT. So what is the function or the circuit that I want to implement is a combination of circuit. I call it prime four, which basically 
take as input a 4-bit number and will output 1 in the case of this bit is prime, 0 otherwise. It's quite easy example. Here I have some description of Verilog of, how, of this behavior and then you might be looking at it and say like, okay, this guy has no idea how to do Verilog description and there is a real good reason for that but it's also true I'm more of a VHDL guy. <laughs> so this is the bird eyes view of what I want to show to you. We'll do it in three steps. We'll first take the, the, the description and then extract the logic out of it, a logic representation out of it and then last we'll do the technology mapping. Hopefully if we have time I will show how to do some optimization in, in uh, between those two steps. So how do you do the parsing? For, for parsing we will use the Lorena library which has a collection of parsers for various file formats using logic synthesis. We have for Eiger, Bench, Blitz, PLA, Verilog, but very simple gate-based Verilog and that's the reason why the Verilog looked so weird uh, in the previous slide. We also have some lib uh, able to parse Liberty files that's still a work in progress. And the library itself, it is lightweight and quite com customizable. Basically, the parsers, they will read the input and invoke callbacks whenever a parsing primitive is completed. So you need something to interface with this library. And what we use, and what we will use in this presentation, is our uh, logic network library, MockTurtle, that provides various logic network representations and implement several reader callbacks for Ager, Bench, PLA, and Verilog. So now we will use the Verilog parser, and by parsing the input, we can get this uh, network representations, which basically on your left you have this uh, N inverter graph. So you have the inputs on the bottom as the triangles. You have uh, one output at the top, and uh, a bunch of nodes in between. Uh, in, in there, there are two input end gates and the and edges that connect those gates and then when, when you have a dashed egg it means there is a, a inverter. You also can use a majority inverter graph representation that you have on the right which the main difference lies on the fact that the nodes are three input majority gates. It also has this, uh, this constant zero node right there that it is also present on the IG but as I didn't need to use it here I omit it and I will be omitting it for the rest of the presentation. But these are logic networks after optimization. Actually when we read them uh, directly they look much messier and then they would not fit in this light. The IAG actually does so basically when we first read the IAG this is when we first read the Verilog this is the end inverter graph that represents the logic of the prime four input. So let me talk about a little bit about the MockTurtle library and um, it is based on this philosophy of four layers. You have a network interface API that basically define some naming conventions and methods for classes that implement the, the network structures and with that allows us to implement the algorithms in a more generic way. It, then w this will be understood in a few slides. <coughs> we have the algorithms themselves that use the API and then we have algorithms for logic synthesis, optimization and technology mapping and then we have a bunch of network implementation. So you, want, you might want to represent your logic as uh, an inverter graph, a majority inverter graph, maybe XOR majority graphs, XOR n graphs, KLT networks or whatever kind of network implementation you want to implement yourself and as long as you keep to our naming conventions all the algorithms that we have implemented there to do optimization and mapping should work. Lastly we have this layer for performance tweaks where we basically you can specialize some algorithms to work better in, uh, in, some, in some networks and I will not go into details of, of this and I'm not even sure if we are using this right now. So, okay, we have our, uh, our earning inverter graph and now we want to, what we want to do is map it. So we have a bunch of algorithms, we have cut enumeration, lead to mapping, node resynthesis, cut rewriting, refactoring, a bunch of different algorithms and uh, if you have no idea what this is, it is not such a problem because 
we are well documented, so basically you can go to the web page in our documentation and it will explain what the algorithm does, how it does it, it really details, and then sometimes too many details, quite verbose, but then you can understand and learn what's going on right there. So let's begin with the LUT mapping, and then basically our goal is to cut our Boolean network in a way that the, the different pieces can fit into our LUT3 uh, primitive. And we call these pieces cuts, so we cut it into cuts. And, uh, and there are many different ways to do that, so basically we could do it like this, and you see that our resulting LUT network would use seven, uh, seven LUTs. But of course, there are many ways of actually cutting a network, so what we do first is that we do cut the numeration, and we do it bounding some parameters. We bound the size of the LUT because we only are interested in LUTs with maximum with cuts with maximum of three inputs. And then we also give a maximum number of cuts because we don't want to keep enumerating different cuts forever. So we take that that uh, this representation, and then we can enumerate a little bit more cuts. And then when you're happy about the number of cuts that we have, what we do is we select a set of cuts that will map the whole no logic network. And our aim here it is to find a good ma mapping with respect to some cost function that you can define. Maybe you're interested in have a uh, shorter critical path delay, or maybe you're interested in, have, in uh, using a smart number of LUTs. So by selecting different cuts, instead of having this mapping, we could do it slightly better, or we can do it even better. And not only minimizing the number of LUTs, but the number of logic levels in this, uh, in this network. So by now, I could have, okay, I'm done, but that would be no fun, so let's look at how to do a bit of optimization using a mock turtle. So for optimization, I would do cut rewriting, and then basically, because we already presented what, how to cut the network, so what this does, this algorithm will try to rewrite cuts in terms of, the, of another set of nodes. So it will take one cut, the cut is the subnetwork itself, so we'll try to minimize the number of nodes inside that cut. And uh, for example, let's take for example this cut. We want to compute a replacement for it, so we want a function that implements the same functionality that it is being realized by this, uh, by this set of nodes. And the, first, and the first thing we do is actually we want to represent more explicitly what the function that this cut is implementing it is actually doing. And for that, we use a truth table. So, and when, when dealing with truth table, Kitty library comes quite handy. It provides two data structures to manipulate uh, truth tables. We have static truth tables, dynamic truth tables, and the main difference is that you know the number of variables at compile time or at runtime, and then you can, and then some of its algorithms will be faster if you know at run at compile time what is the the number of variables. It also provides you several algorithms to do some operations between two tables, finding implicants, canonization, NPN, spectral. If you have no idea what that is, you can again look at the documentation. It is there. It explained. So we take the cut and we generate a truth table for it, and then we can generate the truth table by basically just outputting all, inputting all possible input combinations and then see what happens in, the, in, in R, and then we get our truth table. And now we want to synthesize a new network for this that will implement the same function. And to do so, we use exact synthesis, which given a specification, in this case the truth table, it will find an optimum Boolean network where the optimality, <coughs> optimability is defined with respect to some uh, cost function. So for that, we use Percy, exact synthesis library. It, uh, it offers a collection of different SATs over exact synthesis methods for circuit resynthesis, design exploration, or a function classification. It is easy, it is easy to prototype and ex experiment with topology-based synthesis different encodings, different sets overs, back ends, and uh, parallel synthesis. So when we put this through Percy, 
it gives us a slightly better network for this cut that uses instead of five, four nodes. So the algorithm of cutting rewriting will basically compute potential replacements like this for our cuts and then heuristically select a maximum set of cuts that are no conflicting between them and, uh, and man maximize some of the overall gain that we're trying to, uh, to, to get. So basically, in this example, what I'm trying to, to do it is minimize the number of LUTs that I, I will be using. So by applying the algorithm to the different cuts, we can actually get this network that can be cut and use only three LUTs in the end. So we, we are able to squeeze out one more LUT from our, from our previous selection by using this, this optimization. So this is a basically uh, a simple summary of what we see. So you start from a very log, you extract the logic representation of it, in this case the AIG, you optimize or, uh, your circuit using cut rewriting or some of the other techniques that we provide, and then you map it to the to LUT network. So, so far, everything is quite easy, and then I have make it easy and mask some of the details of the implementation, but talking is easy. How is the code look like to do all those steps that I just told you? And it is basically this code. So here we first uh, load the network and we parse the input and create the network. Then we do the cut rewriting. And when you do cut rewriting, you end up with some no dangling nodes in, in, in a network. So you need to, to clean it up afterwards. And then you map it to your uh, to LUT. It is as simple as that. And then af afterwards, you can write in one of the formats that can then be the input for some placing routing uh, tool that comes afterwards. So here we have some other uh, some other example that also use Alice. And uh, most of showcase and examples you can you can look at the GitHub repository. So basically this example provides a, a simple shell interface using the Alice library. It loads some truth tables and then um, do some binary, load truth tables from binary and decimal, decimal strings, load from bench, do some NPN canonization and, uh, and then you can play around and then to have something like this it would be more kind of a tool. It only takes the 260 eight lines of code from the user's point of view, for, for, for the people who are actually composing the libraries and doing their, uh, their thing. So with that, I came to the end of my presentation. I might use this. I, I do have some other slides on the other, uh, a bit of the other libraries, but as these slides are not so nice with this, uh, so I think we can end it here and then go for the questions. So does the tool handle multiple output? Uh, uh, yes, it does. It does handle multiple outputs. It is just that for these slides, the sake of simplicity, we're just using one output. But it can handle multiple outputs. So, how, oh yes. So, how the modules connect to each other is that what you're asking? So, basically, for example, Mock Turtle already has embedded in in it the, some of the other libraries. So, Mock Turtle already has the Lorena library inside it, and uh, Kitty and Percy. Most you see that Mock Turtle 
because of what it does, has most of the other models already in it. So basically, they have their own namespace there, but they, they already come with the, the code itself. I don't know. Yeah, so exactly. So when, when, you, get, when you get Mock Turtle, you, you get more, almost everything, if not everything. But maybe you don't want to do with logic networks at all. You want just truth tables. So you can only, you, you don't need all the, all the rest. So you can only take, take a kitty. Mock Turtle will be the one that has everything kind of, it is when everything comes together. But Alice, then when you have Alice, then you have the shell interface and then all this, uh, it, it does logging, it, it, you can create commands and stuff like that. Also with Alice, you can uh, interface the code with Python, so you, you have you Python bindings as well. So you have some flows that use Python and then you can easily script and hack some of these optimizations and how uh, together. So the question is if we can override cost functions. Yes, you can pass cost functions as parameters. And then uh, that's basically what we do in uh, some of these algorithms are also using in the, this quantum compilation flow. And then we, in quantum, we do use different <coughs> cost functions. So they are configurable. As long as there's an object that can be called as a function, you can pass it as a. More questions? Any more questions? Oh. What, uh, how, how, how does this fit, fit into the broad, broader system? Has there been an attempt on Yosis integration? Uh, how does it interact with the uh, re work that's been done over the past couple of weeks on doing, building a new uh, synthesis engine for mm. Yosis? So how does this fit in a broader system? That's the question. So basically, whenever you use something like ABC, you could more or less replace it, if it is in the logic synthesis, you could more or less replace it with, uh, with the libraries that we have here. ABC has more things in, in form of verification as well, but for example, in this last semester we gave, uh, there was a lecture in, uh, in ADA, in a PFL, where the students were asked to, to use those libraries with YOSIS. And we definitely want to do more integration with YOSIS, we just do not know how to use the Verilog parser in Yosis to harness and get all the different combinational parts and then we could do optimization there. But the goal here is just like to expose ourselves and then try to put ourselves in this, uh, in this other uh, flows. And then we're quite open and we have been talking to other groups that are willing to use this, uh, those libraries in their, uh, in their whole flows. Yeah, exactly. So basically, actually, if I wanted to do this example, I would still need to tweak a little bit because the default is lookup table of four. Oh, okay, sorry. I need to repeat the question. Uh, so the question is if I can change the, for different sizes of lookup tables. And yes, you can. You can configure yourself what the size of the lookup will be. So, not really, basically, so have we considered to use some kind of intermediate representation to plug in other flows? In, uh, so, we already support many of the intermediate representations in logic synthesis. Basically, mo some of those flows can, can output a blif file, for example, and then we can read it. You can parse it blif and then we can output blif. So, that will be more or less the, this intermediate representation you're talking about. All the other RTL languages, more in, in between, I don't know. The problem with RTL languages is quite the, the parsers are quite complex and requires a lot of work to put in there, and then we don't, we don't do it currently. So the, uh, the optimal, the question is, the, says that the optimal mapping should be correlated with timing. 
So we use some sort of abstraction of it, basically the number of logic levels in your network, right? That more and less will tell you about delay. We do not know exactly what it is because to do the exactly timing, we need to do the placing route. So actually this is the reason why we are doing this liberty file parsing where you can get this information back and then try to do, and then you can loop around and then use timing information, more precise timing information to guide your logic synthesis and optimization algorithms. We are working on that. Any other questions? No? Okay, let's thank Bruno again. Thank you.